In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The definition of pandemic. Worldwide, prevailing over an entire region or the world. Pandemic is an adjective that, adjective that many are using to describe another condition that plagues humanity all around the globe. 294 million people suffer with this condition, this condition worldwide. It is called anxiety. Anxiety. To this point, there are two writers who I wish to reference to talk about just how pandemic anxiety is. The first is a writer by the name of Tim Newman, who wrote about anxiety in the medical news today back on September 5th, 2018. This is what he said. Anxiety seems to be rampaging through society like a non-contagious cognitive plague, forming a low-level hum that hides in the corners of our collective minds. And then there's the author David Zoll, who wrote the book Seculosity, who associates a rise in anxiety with a decline in church attendance. What he talks about in his book is that it seems that people in the world have replaced Jesus with the gods of daily pursuits. People have replaced Jesus, who is God, with things like career or parenting or technology, politics, precaution, and on and on and on. But these things, instead of giving to you anything, they demand more of you. These things keep telling you that what you have to give is just not enough. And because you find that in this world you do not have enough, it creates for us anxiety. And anxiety feels like, and I believe that many of us who are sitting here today, anxiety feels like a restlessness. You are on edge right now. You are fatigued. You are having difficulty con concentrating. Your muscles are tense. All of this happens because the gods of our pursuit are constantly telling us that what we have is not enough. But that is not what the one true God is saying. The one true God is not a God that you pursue, but he is a God who relentlessly pursues you. The one true God is not a God who just tells you you do not have enough. He is the God who gives you enough for right now and forever. So today, if you find yourself feeling this restlessness, this being on edge, the fatigue, the distraction, and the muscle tension, I would like to take you back to what the one true God says in our first reading today. If I can invite you all to open with me again to page five of your worship folder. Page five of your worship folder, you will find our first reading, which is 1 Kings chapter 4. So on page five, I would like to look at 1 Kings chapter 4, and I would look right at with you verse 44. Let's take a look at that. Page five of your worship folder, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 44 together. It says, Then he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. What is the word of the Lord saying here? It's saying that God gave them enough for now and for later. God gave them enough for now and then some. So today, if you find yourself feeling anxious and all of those things that go with anxiety right now, I want you to hear what the word of the Lord is saying. That God 
gives you enough for now, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. But what are the gods of your daily pursuit saying to you? What's your career saying to you? What's your technology saying to you? What's politics saying to you? What's your struggle with, with parenting saying to you? Your desire for caution. You want to know what the gods of your pursuit are saying? Nothing. They say nothing because they are nothing. They are not God. They cannot provide you with enough. They demand that you give them enough. What you are really hearing speaking to you is actually Satan. Satan, the accuser, the one who is always telling you, you do not have enough. You are hearing Satan speaking to you through the voice of the serpent who's tempting us and inviting us to eat from places that are forbidden. What you're hearing talking to you is the voice of the Antichrist and all of the collective anxious voices in the world. All of the news stories, all of the advertisements, the self-righteous social media posts, the virtue signaling that occurs in society from all of the voices of your anxious peers. You are hearing the devil speak to you through the anxiety in your mind, asking the question, am I enough? You hear him talking to you through your shame. Do they think I'm enough? You hear him talking to you through your guilt. Have I done enough? Even with our treasures in heaven, these same voices constantly are talking to us. If you were to go up to a Muslim today and ask, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? He would probably say, I'm not sure. That's because in Islam, you go to heaven or you go to hell based on whether or not your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. So on any given day, they are not sure if they have enough. But even our own Martin Luther struggled with the idea of his salvation. You know, before he put his trust in the Jesus Christ who gives him enough, daily he would torment and torture himself. He would beat himself with whips fast and crawl around praying on his knees until they bled. But even as we try to make ends meet, we hear these voices talking to us. In fact, we become like that man who came from Baal Shalisha in our reading, who says to Elisha, how can I put this, 20 of these, before 100 hungry men? But what it sounds like for us in the modern age and in our economy is, how can I, with just a bachelor's degree, get a good job? Or how can I, as a single mom, feed my children? How can I, with just a five-figure salary, keep a roof over my head? How can I, as a, a senior citizen on a fixed income, keep up with the rising costs? But I have to admit to you, even in church ministry, I catch myself saying those same things. Back in 2018, when I first came here, I arrived at Our Savior, hoping to work through 
and to work with parents, active church member parents in the school to reach their peers. But then when I found that there were really only two, two active member families in a school of 180 students, I became really concerned. But that was not the first time that I experienced incredible odds in ministry. Actually, back when I was 20 years old, one day at the door, there was a ring at the doorbell, when I opened up the door, standing there on the doormat were these two tall, handsome men in white press shirts, wearing blue name tags. You know who I'm talking about. So they were there to share, me, share with me their faith but as I listened to them, God put it on my heart to share with them mine. And so we spent some time there standing in the doorway talking for a while until finally my mom came up and said, it's time for dinner. And then the next thing I know, we were inviting these two men into our house to, to dine with us. So let me, let me pause here and say, folks, unless you really, really know what you're doing, and you really, really know your scripture and doctrine very well, do not do this. In fact, in fact, John, the apostle, in his second letter, verse 10, you can look it up, says, don't do it. But we really, at the time, did not know what we were dealing with. But it was in the course of that conversation we learned a lot more about what was going on with them. But then I learned a lesson that was going to help me later on in ministry about how when we find ourselves at the table, when it seems like there's not enough, how God sets before us enough for right now, this meal, and forever. Amen. Amen. But you want to know the reason why we have enough? That's because what God gives us it's more than just this. What God gives us, it's more than just a few loaves of bread. Actually, what God gives us is Jesus. God gives us Jesus. And you all know, Jesus is the body of Christ. The body of Christ set before us, hop high on the cross so that all who believe in him will have eternal life. He is the body of Christ that's set before us on the altar so that all who feed of this, who drink of this, will be satisfied, will have their sins forgiven, and will have the strength to live a new life. Amen. Jesus is the life that is set before us. Life not only for this world, but life for the world to come that God has promised us. And amen, Jesus is the grace. The grace that is, you read it, sufficient. The grace that is, we sang it, the grace that is enough. It is enough to forgive us of our anxious minds and thoughts. It is enough to forgive us of our shame and of our guilt. This grace is enough for us when we experience hardships, persecution, and difficulties, and yes, a troubled economy as we try to make ends, ends meet. Jesus is the body, the life, and the grace which is enough, which is all that we need. When we sat down at that dinner table, Jesus was going to show up. So as we were sitting there, my mom set before us this meager little roasted duck, which she had prepared for just the three of us who were home at the time. But now we had two young men as guests with big appetites. 
And I remember thinking to myself, that duck is not going to be enough. But that's just it. Just when we think we do not have enough, God gives us Jesus Christ who gives us his body, who gives us everlasting life, and who gives us grace, so that now and tomorrow and forever, we have enough. We have enough because God gives us more than just bread. He has given us his word. Jesus said it in the desert, while he was fasting, while the devil was talking to him. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of our Lord. This bread, this word, makes this bread, makes this bread more than just bread. But in and with it is Christ's body, which was given for us for the forgiveness of sins. And also that strength of new, to live a new life. And also out of God's grace. And what is the word of God saying through Elisha today, the prophet? He's saying, set this bread before them. And they will have what they need to eat now. And they will have some left over. God sets before you his word today. So by that word, you have more than just bread. You have Jesus, body, life, and grace. You have his word and his promises of everlasting life. You, as you try to make ends meet, have enough. So today, if you find yourself hearing those voices from the serpent, from the devil, the antichrist, Satan, I want you to be sure to get yourself someplace where you can hear God's voice. Be someplace where you can hear his word, which promises that you will have enough and some left over. Be in your daily devotions in that word. Be in a Bible study. Come to worship where you can hear in the Bible the prophets like Elisha speaking, the apostles speaking, where you can hear the minister speaking to you the word, where you can hear one another confessing Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. Hear those words. Hear those voices. Know that God has given you enough for now and then some. Now, just because you have enough, that doesn't mean you're just going to sit on your hands and do nothing. Oh, no, no, that's not what that means. Having enough means that God has, has given you bread to set before the people in your life. God has given you, Jesus, his body, his life, his grace to share with all of the loved ones in your life. God has given you his word, his gospel, his promises to share with all of your anxious friends. Share this body. Share this word with your community, with your world, so that they will know that God has given them enough. So that day at the dinner table, my family and I were sharing with those two guests, Jesus. And what's really neat about the story is that, you know, as we ate and came to the conclusion of the dinner, believe it or not, there was still some duck left over. There was enough duck left over for me to have a lunch the next day with it. And so listen to this. When I asked my guests, would you like any more? Would you, would you like a second helping? They said no. And listen to this. We've had enough to eat. Besides the duck, besides the side dishes that we had that day, they had also had Jesus. They had Jesus and the word that we shared, and the promise of life and the grace that he gives us. 
God gives us enough to set before the people in our lives. He has given us his everlasting and eternal word. He gives that word without limit. You will always have it, and it will never go away. Heaven and earth may fade away, but Jesus promises, my word will never fade away. In the four years that I've been here, God has reminded me of this lesson with the duck. Actually, he's reminded me of this lesson with the bread. Because when I came here, and although I found two active member families in the school, since that time, I've watched God do some amazing things with those people. I've watched him do amazing things through you. Just as God did some amazing things with the bread that day in Gilgal in the wilderness, God has done some amazing things in all of you. He's made you all spiritual giants. He's put his power on you and the Holy Spirit. He's amplified your serving, amplified your giving, amplified your sharing so that people in this school have heard about Jesus and have bring their children here to be baptized. You are, to me, the 20 loaves that God has set before the people. Set before me as a witness, set before the people of the school, and set before the people of plantation. So that they, in their anxiety, in their daily pursuits, in their fear of having, not having enough, you are bringing them to them, the Jesus who satisfies, who fills us with all good things and the promise of everlasting life. So often when we face the enormity of need in this world, we immediately may think there is no way we can handle this. We start hearing voices in our mind that make us anxious. Uh, voices coming from society. Uh, voices coming from our, the guilt and the shame inside our hearts. But what we're learning today is when God puts that bread before us, he's given us much, much more than bread. He's giving us Jesus himself, who is the body, who is the life, and that grace that we need. He's given us his word, the promise and the reassurance that we don't need to be nervous, but we have this reassurance in God's word, not the voices in our head, but God's spoken word, that he's all there with us. What I really appreciate about this text, and nothing is by mistake in God's word, all of it has some meaning, is that the place from which this bread was brought in the story, it was called Baal Shalisa. And here's what's really kind of cool. Baal means Lord. And Shalisa means three. So the place is known as the place where there's the Lord of three. The Lord of three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this body, who is the Lord of life, and who is the Lord of grace. It is the living bread, the bread from heaven, Jesus Christ who has come from heaven to us so that as we try to make ends meet, as we find ourselves anxious, we can always be reassured and know that we have enough for now in this life and enough for always. Through him, our Lord, Jesus Christ, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.